Catherine here, I've been helping people suffering from kidney disease for almost 10 years now. My aim is not just to help you alleviate the symptoms. My aim is to give you the tools to achieve tangible results in improving kidney function. Results that are measurable by improved levels in the creatinine, proteinuria, and GFR levels. And today, results that may have been considered impossible just a few years ago can happen. But many doctors will still tell you that it's not possible to improve your kidney function. Don't believe them. Things have changed a lot in the last few years when it comes to treating kidney disease. Achievements that were considered miracles like reversing kidney disease have been documented in medical literature. And for some patients, all that it takes is just one tablet a day. This is because that one tablet a day can protect your kidneys from blood acidity. Question, is lowering blood acidity really going to reverse kidney disease? For the general population, it is almost harmless to ingest huge amounts of acid-forming foods such as meat, cheese, processed grains, sweets, and soft drinks. But if you have kidney problems, having too many of these foods in your diet will cause your blood acidity to raise, and that's very bad for you. It's a cause of kidney damage. This is why, according to medical literature, someone with kidney disease shouldn't take way less acid-forming foods than the general population. And when patients did this, the miracle happened. Yes, some patients were able to reverse CKD just by eating more alkaline. This is a proven fact. But unfortunately, many CKD patients find it difficult to navigate the alkaline way of eating. In the next few minutes, we will make sure this doesn't describe you. Question, what happens to your kidneys when you stop intaking too much acid from foods? The kidneys will improve quickly. The reason is one of the most important functions of the kidneys in the body, filtering excess acid in the blood. When what you eat produces more acid than what your kidneys can excrete, this acid is going to pile up in the body. It will damage bones and muscles, it will deplete serum bicarbonate, and it will make kidney disease progress faster. And obviously, as kidney disease progresses, less and less acid can be processed, causing symptoms and complications including hyperkalemia, fatigue, bone damage, and metabolic acidosis. This is why reducing the dietary acid load by following an alkaline diet and taking this special tablet every day can do miracles. And one thing that most people don't expect to see when they start eating more alkaline, they usually feel immediately better. I've seen this happen in many patients and it's also documented in literature. So you may actually feel better and fast when starting an alkaline diet. And while foods such as meat, cheese, fried foods are too acid forming, there are certain foods that actually decrease the acid load by adding alkalinity in the body. What foods are the most alkaline forming? What we must understand about the alkalinity of food, which is key to improve kidney health as we have seen, is that foods that taste acidic are not necessarily acid forming. The most interesting example here are fruits such as lemon, grapefruit, and kiwi. They will taste acidic when you eat them, but they actually are alkaline forming on the kidneys. And these fruits are great for a renal diet by the way. Another unsuspectedly healthy alkaline food is coffee. While many people believe that coffee is bad for you, drinking it in moderation is actually healthy. But remember that I'm talking about brewed black coffee with no sugar or creamer. And it's also alkaline forming. To make sure of this, we just need to look at the Prowl score. Prowl score is a measurement of the amount of acid your kidneys will have to remove after eating 100 grams of a certain food. The lower the prowl, the better. A high prowl value, like what meat, poultry, and junk foods have, means that the food is really heavy on the kidneys. Negative prowl values like that of the foods of today's video is actually helping the kidneys removing acid. Coffee, for example, has a prowl score of minus 1.4, meaning that it removes some acidity. Lemon is even better at minus 2.6. 
Kiwi fruit is a true powerhouse with an incredible minus 4.1 on the Prowl score. Now, when it comes to low Prowl score foods that are a must in diet that protects the kidneys from acidity, vegetables are the true champions. Because while many fruits are healthy, certain veggies are so alkaline forming they can undo the damage done by eating acid forming foods. Some of the best foods in the world for the kidneys include kohlrabi. This is a vegetable in the brassica oleracea family that comes either in green or purple and can be eaten raw or cooked. It is very alkaline at Prol minus 5.6. And it is also rich in many of the micronutrients kidney disease patients are often deficient in. Include it in your diet. Bell pepper is also very healthy with a Prowl score of minus 3.5 when eaten raw. Peppers are low in calories, low in potassium and exceptionally rich in vitamin C, vitamin B6, folic acid and other antioxidants. And this makes the bell pepper an excellent addition to a healthy renal diet. Now let's talk about green leafy vegetables. Many green leafy vegetables are incredibly healthy for you. They always take all the best spots in the Prowl score charts. Arugula, for example, has a Prowl score of minus 7.5, which is incredible. Arugula is the cousin of broccoli, kale, and cabbage and shares many of their health benefits. Not to mention that arugula is a source of nitrates, great to lower your blood pressure. Other greens usually we consider are lettuce, kale, celery, parsley, and mustard greens, all very healthy. Try also including spinach, which is high in potassium, but also probably the best food in terms of Prowl score ever with a Prowl of minus 14.0! Now you may ask, isn't the potassium from these foods bad for the kidneys? While today eating too many potassium rich foods is still not recommended by most doctors, this may change in the near future. You see, according to most recent research, dietary potassium is very weakly linked to hyperkalemia or high potassium in blood. In particular, a study compared the potassium in blood in pre-dialysis patients. When dietary potassium went from 500mg a day to 4.500mg a day, a ninefold difference, there was a very small increase in potassium in blood. What this study proves is that the diet is not the most important factor when it comes to keeping potassium under control. There are other factors that play a way more important role in serum potassium management, including avoiding metabolic acidosis. Now guys, there's also a miracle remedy that can really make a big difference in making your body more alkaline. Many studies claim that adding this one remedy makes almost as much difference as doubling the number of daily portions of fruits and veggies. Before that, question, what foods should you completely avoid in a renal diet? There are five categories of foods you should absolutely avoid. Desserts and snacks such as ice creams, candies, pastries, and so on should always be avoided, especially by diabetics. These foods are also acid forming. And also, fried, high fat foods and processed foods in general are very acid forming too. Dairy should be avoided too. Meat is one of the most acid forming foods on the menu. Also, it's a source of protein which is known to directly damage the kidneys. Last group to avoid. Acid-inducing dri acid inducing drinks, especially dark colas. Okay, time now to see the most helpful remedy in the world when it comes to fighting metabolic acidosis or excess of acid in blood. This is sodium bicarbonate. Question, can sodium bicarbonate really help you improve kidney health? In studies on CKD stage 4 patients, those that took sodium bicarbonate were able to delay dialysis significantly. Patients in stage 4 had 2.3 points decline in EGFR in a year, the main indicator of kidney function, when taking sodium bicarbonate. Those not taking it had, however, a 6.58 decline in GFR. This is a very significant difference and means that for those patients, it was possible to significantly delay dialysis just by taking this remedy. This is also why current guidelines state that patients in stage 4 and 5 of chronic kidney disease should take sodium bicarbonate.
Now guys, I hope that many of you already know how crucial taking sodium bicarbonate is for kidney health. But this remedy is also controversial in a way. For example, I've received some comments asking me about the safety of taking sodium bicarbonate. One of the main concerns is sodium. So the question is, is sodium bicarbonate safe if you need to limit salt intake? Sodium bicarbonate does actually contain some sodium in it, just like the salt. So it's clear that those raising the concern about the supplement that contains sodium are in the right. But you see, while it has been proven that excess of salt in the diet is very bad for your blood pressure, sodium bicarbonate is not an issue. This is what a very recent meta-analysis conducted on 1,853 patients with chronic metabolic acidosis found out. In this review, those taking sodium bicarbonate actually had dramatically reduced their blood pressure. So this remedy doesn't just protect your kidneys, but your heart too. The reason behind this is metabolic acidosis. What is metabolic acidosis? As we have seen, one of the most important jobs of the kidneys is to keep acidity alkalinity in balance. In people with kidney disease, this balance is often compromised. The kidneys cannot remove enough acid from the body and this causes it to build up. This condition is characterized by symptoms such as fatigue, headache, fast heartbeat, nausea and loss of appetite. And according to recent studies, it may also raise your blood pressure. This is why sodium bicarbonate has been shown to help with that too. Now, untreated metabolic acidosis will also cause bone loss, endocrine disorders, hyperkalemia, and muscle loss. And obviously, the main problem with metabolic acidosis is that it will cause further kidney damage. How do you know if you have metabolic acidosis? There is a test called serum bicarbonate level test, which you can do to know if you have this complication. It's also known as the CO2 blood test and it's usually done as a part of the basic metabolic panel or BMP in short, one of the routine health exams kidney disease patients should do regularly. On your labs, it is usually called TCO2 and the normal range for CO2 is 23 to 29 mL equivalent units per liter of blood. If your levels are out of this range, it means you need sodium bicarbonate. Question, what is the correct dose for sodium bicarbonate? In case your CO2 level is 22 or below, your doctor needs to prescribe you sodium bicarbonate. They should also tell you exactly how much to take and when. One gram three times per day with water is a common dosage, but your doctor can give you a smaller dose or a bigger one depending on your CO2 levels. We all know that some doctors don't know or don't care, so double check your last blood test and see if you need it. Remember that sodium bicarbonate also contains sodium or salt, so do not take this remedy if you don't need it. But sodium bicarbonate is actually an FDA approved medication for certain conditions including kidney disease as we can see here. This is why you can also buy sodium bicarbonate at your pharmacy both in tablets and injectable form. However, it's more common for people to just buy it at the grocery store. And a lot of people take sodium bicarbonate off-label by mouth for its other properties including treating heartburn and improving sport performance. And yes, sodium bicarbonate is a remedy that's really helpful in the advanced stages of kidney disease, especially when paired with a healthy, kidney-friendly, alkaline diet. And if you want to know more about what the best remedies for kidney disease are, my video up here is for you. And this is all for today. Thank you for watching. God bless.